the world has changed. And there is a new new. When I used to trade commodities, I thought that I had gone to heaven. It was, it was in my personality. But I was willing to make big bets on my intuition. Like uh, Warren Buffett says, it's one of the reasons he's so successful. He's been around a thousand years and compounded interest rates. Well, the kids don't want to wait a thousand years. The kids are entitled. They think they should make money quicker. Like my generation, supposedly in the 80s, uh, was the generation that, that ripped the guts out of the financial world. Well, I was part of that generation. Now the guts are being ripped out, not by individuals, but by a catastrophe, unfortunately. When you talk to young kids that are in the business, you call them snowflakes because they melt under pressure. In my age, my group would take a page out of a phone book to wipe my ass and not worry about toilet paper. Most kids don't even know what a phone book looks like. The main guy or the main gal uh, still is buying, you know, 500 shares or 1,000 shares or some company they heard a story about. I learned while I was with the Onassis Group, investigate before you invest. And one of the best bits of advice I ever got. Most people don't do proper investigation. They just take it on blind faith. But the two high performance people I've had the privilege of being around, most of which were wealthy, not all, don't put up with the crap either. I find it interesting some of the TV programs where uh, somebody obviously says something that's not right that nobody says, well, you're full of shit. The world's a different place. It just is. And before kids were complaining about it, they can't get started on the property land, the buy house. Now our kids that are millennials, and we didn't give them any money, somehow they bought a fucking, they bought a fucking house. They went to great school, got great jobs. They've been there 10 years, and now they make pretty decent money. But for the average kid, I can understand. How do you buy a, in California, the cheap house is a half a million bucks. In Oklahoma, that's a big house. But the world has changed. But if you want to get rich, you don't go to work for Fox and Gamble. You go down to the pits. This is our market. We have guys closing deals. We've got teenage multimillionaires flying around in their own jet. Now is the time. But you got to step up. I was asked 30 years ago at my spoke at the Harvard Club in New York City. Mr. Pena, do you consider your extraordinary wealth in such a short period of time balls or brains? And I said 50-50. I now say, 30 years later, 90-10. But today's kids that have grown up, and I'm sure that uh, uh, even some of the people that have money to manage, because I know you guys manage a bunch of money, the uh, second and third generation kids that didn't make the money don't understand the consternation it is to make it. It's quite remarkable. Really wealthy people that I know are not rich worried about a return on their investment. They're worried about a return of their investment. And if you can't live with inflation, then you can make enough money. I use the analogy, uh, if you put a million dollars in the stock market in 2008, before the collapse, your, mo your money roughly doubled a little better than double. Okay? So now you got two million. Can you retire on two million at current interest rates? No. Okay? You're gonna have to live off of principal. Uh, and so my idea has always been, don't worry about inflation, just uh, worry about making uh, more money. A rising tide brings all boats up. And we've had a rising tide for uh, up until just recently for 11 years. So a monkey can make money. And now in the next two, three, four years, in my opinion, it's going to separate the boys from the, the men. And uh, not everybody's going to make money. Uh, two, two things, words of wisdom. Number one, if you're worrying about paying taxes, you're not making enough money. And number two, you never underestimate how wrong you can be.